Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. You are currently in my dorm room. Um, I have not seen you in forever and um, today's Bible study is actually very special to me. Things I've been wrestling with and a lot of that is um, shame and guilt. And so I wanted to do this Bible study on John 8 with you all because I feel like this is something that a lot of us wrestle with and I know that if it helps me it'll probably help you. The first thing that I want to do before we delve into John 8, you have your Bibles you can totally open to that, is I wanted to talk to you about shame and guilt and I love this quote from Julie, Julie Slattery. I will leave her link down below um, but this is what she says regarding shame and guilt. She says, true guilt can lead to repentance and restoration but shame looms like an oppressive cloud separating us from the knowledge and love of Christ. She also says, feelings of guilt are healthy when they reflect our true state of guilt. Guilt is rooted in what we have done, the action, while shame is the condemnation of who we are. If you are like me and you deal with shame or guilt in regards to your failures, your sins, um, which a lot of us do, then you know that it is totally oppressive. And oftentimes I notice that when I feel far from God, when I'm avoiding God, it's likely because I'm feeling shame. And that has been one of the biggest wake up calls for me this semester as I've been struggling, feeling um, further, farther from God. Um, I, it's not that I don't have great moments, but it's also a struggle when you feel shame and you feel guilt and you almost feel undeserving to come to God. And so it creates this perpetual cycle of feeling shame and guilt, but then also not coming to the remedy, coming to the healer, coming to the one who um, died and by his wounds we are healed. So I find that this passage where Jesus deals with this woman who has dealt with sexual sin, is being publicly humiliated, is really eye-opening to the heart of God, to the heart of Christ, the Son, and how he deals with our own guilt, our own sin, our own struggles, our own shameful, secret sins. So the goal for today is to simply read the text for what it is. And I want to see how Jesus handles condemnation over sin. I'm going to leave um, questions at the end and prompts that I want you to journal through. Hey friends, just wanted to pause this video here to say that Christian Ministry EDU is sponsoring this video today. Let's go check out their website for more information. Christian Ministry EDU is a one-stop shop when it comes to degree and professional guidance and is structured to help students discover schools and career paths that match their spiritual mission. With program and career guides that span across Christian leadership and ministry positions, you'll be able to make an informed decision about your specific calling to serve. Learn more about how you can gain the tools to pursue your faith-inspired future today at christianministryedu.org. Now, you guys know that this is Ashley speaking, and I got my degree in biblical studies, so I would highly encourage you to pursue ministry as a full-time career, I have no regrets doing that as my career. And if you feel like God is calling and tugging on your heart to do full-time ministry, I'd highly encourage you guys to check out this website. So as we go through the passage today, we're going to be going through the easy Bible study method. If you have seen any of our other previous videos, you know that this is a Bible study method that Ashley came up with that helps us to read through the text of the Bible and make sure that we're getting out the meaning that it intended. So let's begin simply by reading the text. I'm going to have you pause the video and read John 8, 1 through 11, two times. First, you can read it in a translation of your own choice. ESV is good. Um, NLT, NIV, CSB, KJV, NKJV. Those are just all different types of translations. 
feel free to read it in your own translation. And the second time through that you read it, I want you to read it in NIV because that is what we are going to be studying through with it today. Now let's delve into this passage. We're going through the easy Bible study method. We're going to be starting with E, which stands for enter into the story. So the question that we're going to be asking is, what would you be feeling if you were her? What would you be feeling if you were the woman who was caught in the act of adultery, in sexual sin? You know, people probably feel the most shame in regards to sexual sin. How would you be feeling if you were her? If you were dragged in front of a crowd of people, not to mention the Son of God, how would you be feeling? Julie Slattery said, shame looms like an oppressive cloud separating us from knowing the love of Christ. The Pharisee's goal was not to lead her to repentance and restoration. The goal of the Pharisees was definitely to put shame on her, to make her feel terrible. And now, of course, they were trying to trap Jesus in um, seeing what he would do to this woman but specifically to this woman, their goal, unfortunately, even as religious leaders, was not to lead her to repentance. So in your journal, I want you to journal through what you would be feeling if you were her. I just wanted to pause the video here to say that the Halo app is sponsoring today's video. If you have not heard of the Halo app, it is the number one Christian prayer app for prayer in the U.S. today, and it is the number one Catholic app in the world. This app is an amazing resource for anyone who puts their hope and faith in Jesus. Any Christians or Catholics who are seeking to pursue a deeper relationship with the Lord through so prayer. So Hollow has over 5,000 audio guided up. prayers and meditations. You just click on the prayer or the meditation that you wanna to listen to for that morning or for that evening or during the day. And then you just put your headphones in, you close your eyes, you breathe, you relax. And as I was even doing this app, it was reading scripture to me and it was helping me to meditate and think about what does that scripture mean to me in my own life? And how is it going to transform my life? If you use a special link, I have it linked in the description, you will get a special discount offer of three months free trial. And you can listen to anything they have on the app. You can get into any of the meditations, any of the prayers. I am so, so thankful that I'm partnering with Halo because I believe in their mission 100%. And I hope you guys enjoy Hollow just like we do. Next is A in the Easy Bible Study Method, and it stands for assess the main idea. In other words, what does Jesus want the woman to understand? And for this, I want you to look at verses 10 and 11. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. I would argue that when assessing this main passage, the two things that Jesus wants this woman to walk away with is knowing, number one, judgment alone is reserved for God. No one is able to cast a stone because everybody is a sinner. James tells us that who are you to judge? There is only one lawgiver and one judge. That is Christ. And the second thing that Jesus wants this woman to walk away with knowing is that he does not condemn when he judges. His kindness is meant to lead us to repentance. You see, the one person that would actually have theoretically the right to condemn her would be the perfect one, would be God himself, who is perfect. But even Jesus doesn't do that. He takes up this posture of humility when dealing with this woman who is literally publicly humiliated for what she has done, for be being literally caught in the act of adultery, of cheating, of having sex. Jesus does not separate himself from her. 
He does not separate himself from sinners. In fact, Jesus creates this vulnerable space where he removes all the distraction. He removes all the condemnation. He removes the people that are questioning and questioning and humiliating her. And he allows her to set her gaze on him alone. And you can imagine the weight of probably filth and shame that she's feeling. And he looks at her and he says, I don't condemn you. The God of the universe, seeing her in her raw, naked, sinful state says, I do not condemn you for what you've done. He is the judge, but he doesn't condemn. His kindness is meant to lead to repentance. Jesus does not push away sinners. He does not push you away from him because of what you've done. He longs for intimacy intimacy with you. He longs for you to know his heart, that which does not condemn you for what you've done. The third step in the easy Bible study method is to seek God and his character. So what I want you to journal through right now is the question of what is God's characteristics that you find in this passage? Is Jesus surprised at her sin? Does he act appalled? Does he push the woman away? Is his desire to know her contingent upon her actions? No. Jesus' desire to know this woman is not based on her actions. It's inherent. It's within. It's from his his nature of who he is, which is love. Take time to write down God's characteristics. Some that I found is that he is compassionate, he is merciful, he is gracious, he is the righteous judge. And the last point in the easy Bible study method is why, and that is yearn for a heart change. So again, I want to ask you, what command does Jesus leave the woman with? In verse 11, he says, Neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now, leave your life of sin. So we, too, are sinners. We are like the woman. We are brought before God in our naked, vulnerable state. He sees the worst qualities about us, per se. And you might be watching this video because you are feeling shame. You're having a really hard time separating feelings of conviction over sin and what you've done with attaching condemnation to yourself and who you are inherently. I want you to take time right now to close your eyes and sit with the knowledge that those who long to condemn you, even yourself in your own desire to condemn yourself That is pushed aside when the true judge comes, who is merciful, compassionate, gracious, who has already died for you, paid for your sin, clothes you in robes of white. He desires you, you are his bride. He longs for intimacy with you. He doesn't push you away in your sin. You just like the woman are left with him alone. It's this intimate space of you and him where in prayer you can come to him and know that he does not push you away. Ask the Lord what it means to leave your life of sin. Ask the Lord, what does it mean to leave my cycle of condemnation? Lord, what does it mean to leave my shame? Because we know that the Lord does not desire us to stay in a life of shame. These are the prompts that I want to give you guys to journal through here at the end, alone in your vulnerable and intimate quiet time with the Lord. And you'll notice that my last point that I leave you with is actually to have a friend or a mentor pray over you and what you're going through. It is biblical to confess your sin before others. And that actually helps to remove the barrier of shame because a lot of times shame is a very private thing we feel and when we are sitting in it alone 
um, it kind of festers and it builds and builds and builds to something in our head that we find to be very hard to confess when in reality, um, like we learn in the story, no one is able to condemn you. No one is able to throw a stone at you because we are all sinful. The only person that is able to judge you rightly is the Lord. And even Christ, the Lord, does not condemn you. That is what I want you to walk away understanding. This is such powerful truth that you have to proclaim over yourself. And if you don't believe it right now, then you need to continue to pray fervently, praying that the Lord would help you realize this. I don't know what you're feeling shame over. But what I do know is that the Lord Jesus Christ desires an intimate relationship with you regardless of what you've done in your past and regardless of what you're going to do in the future because his desire to have an intimate relationship with you is not contingent upon your actions and upon your ability to live up to perfection. He himself was the perfect sacrifice. He died on the cross for your sins. He is risen and he is with the Father right now, constantly interceding with the Spirit so that you can have a relationship with the Father and you can have a relationship with the Father for the rest of eternity. That is your current state. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have an intimate relationship with him. There is no condemnation in that space. It is a safe space for you to be with him, to confess, to find healing, to find freedom and Today's passage, I hope, allows you to see that you can declare that over yourself. This is the powerful truth of God's word. This is the beauty of coming to his word and delighting in it. I hope that this video blessed you. If it blessed you and you enjoyed this interactive 10-minute Bible study, leave a like and I will see you in the comments below. Know that I am here for you. I am rooting for you. I am always thinking about you guys and I will be praying for you. You are not alone. Jesus is near and today is a good day. It's going to be a good day. Why? Because today is the day that the Lord has made. He calls us to rejoice and be glad in it. And if things aren't going well in our lives, we can rejoice in Christ our Savior. Because at the end of the day, if we have him, we have everything. With that, Thank you for watching today's video, and we'll see you in next week's video. Side note, if you enjoy doing these Bible studies with us, please know that we have a devotional membership online where we deliver weekly devotionals to you weekly to your email inbox. It is very, very inexpensive, and if you struggle with coming up with prompts for your quiet time, every week we send you three days worth of devotionals. So. If you're interested in that, I'll leave a link down below and I will see you guys in next week's video.